according to some large potential uh, distribution relationships that we're working on now that will set the stage for a Q1 2025 IPO. Talking starch here. Starch as a commodity to replace plastic with bread and FNS. Great to see you in Zurich. And we learned today that just fast food tier one company is using 2.9 billion cups per year for hot beverages. That's a huge number, huh? It's a massive market and uh, we have an opportunity with a really unique technology to replace a broad range of styrofoam and plastics mm. and uh, the market potential with some of these tier one companies is uh, a little frightening almost uh, to think about but when you look at the opposite side of uh, things and how much plastic and styrofoam will be replaced it will really be a phase shift change in the packaging industry. Yeah, it sounds like a no-brainer using starch that it's decomposable. If I throw it in here, it will totally dissolve within 90 days. Um, but then again, it's not that straightforward because you have to have uh, oven proof, uh, freezer proof, um, pressure proof. So it has to have lots of different attributes, lots of different things that uh, are in the design. And, Guys, you can't feel it right now, but it's really sturdy. So I could probably even put my foot down. We only have this as a sample. So, um, but it feels very robust. It's a pretty solid product and it's manufactured like nothing else in the entire world. Uh, it's actually formed in thermal molds. And so we can produce end products of virtually any shape or size and they have no seams to leak uh, and it has the insulative properties of styrofoam. So it, it's uh, very unique and it's home compostable, which is unheard of in the industry. So it literally will, uh, if you throw it into your garden, it will turn into high value fertilizer for your flowers. Uh, I like to say that it starts as food and it ends as food. It's made from nothing but uh, things like potato starch, corn starch or pea starch, and it can uh, be recycled uh, through the earth right back into its natural ingredients. Wow. Uh, okay, we talked now about that there's a lot of engineering that needs to go into this product, um, but there's also things on how it handles, how it stacks, about the logistics when you're talking about trays, for example, in the packaging industry, in the meat industry, uh, where this also behaves very similar to styrofoam or what you want to replace. Yeah, we're the only thing that I'm aware of in the packaging industry that allows us to mimic styrofoam. Uh, and we can mimic the rigidity and flexibility of styrofoam, but we also have brought back the insulative qualities to the packaging industry that were lost when styrofoam was banned. And so, uh, you know, that's been a huge involve or a advancement. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, we also bring qualities of being uh, food safe, microwave safe, oven safe and freezer safe. Yeah. So it has so many different applications across a broad platform of the packaging industry. Yeah, and I understand you have some good patents in place. Um, 32 countries already uh, are covered with those patents and you have a catalyst coming because uh, the paper cups that are currently being used, that is done by coating it with chemicals, which is obviously not good for your health, but also it's going to be banned as of 2025 in the European Union. So that's a catalyst that we're looking for that will incentivize other companies in this fast food industry, but in the packaging industry in general, to get in touch with you. And you're already doing a few try runs. Yes, we've had an opportunity to do uh, test in, in restaurant tests with some of the largest participants uh, in the coffee and restaurant industry. Uh, the product passed with flying colors. We were able to uh, win the support of both the serving staff as well as customers on the feel of the cup as well as uh, being able to retain the optimal temperature uh, for your beverage. So yeah, as you mentioned, just a, a massive opportunity where government regulation is changing the whole landscape of the industry and literally provides a, almost a vacuum opportunity to market a new technology into. Uh, with the banning of paper cups. Yeah. And as we are normally talking about commodities on our channel, what does the market for starch currently look like? The starch and fiber market is a vast existing uh, commodities in its own right. Uh, the starch-based components can be available from any number of food processing techniques. So whether it's uh, the making of French fries in North America and the potato-based starches 
Uh, we can do corn starches available with maize or corn in Africa. Uh, in the Asian communities with rice, there's just starch available at all levels. And then our other main ingredient would be fiber. That fiber also comes from waste food products. So our ingredients are incredibly low cost. Uh, the fibers that we can use range anywhere from hemp uh, all the way through uh, corn husks, rice, husk, wheat, chaff, etc. So a, a broad application. And as it's uh, being uh, produced basically from waste out of the food processing industry, you're also competitive on pricing, which I find really interesting. So this cup is not more expensive. It can actually meet on price whilst having a much higher ESG score due to the 90 days degradable function. I, I think you've really hit the nail on the head. That is you know, of all of the other benefits that we're able to, to bring back to the packaging industry, cost is by far the biggest advantage. You know, we're literally able to uh, replicate the uh, paper cup alternatives uh, with a product that's 20% cheaper than a paper cup. And having that advantage is really what I think is going to lead the transition of alternative products in the marketplace. Sounds very exciting. You're currently doing a, a seeding round here at a $45 million evaluation. You're looking to go to IPO in Q1 next year, straight to NASDAQ at 250 million. And you have a few contracts, working contracts already in place in the packaging and the fast food industry. So this is not just think tank stage, not just lab stage. You're already in the working environment. You have contracts in place. Exactly. We're, we're hoping um, that the, the schedule will, will roll out uh, according to some large potential uh, distribution relationships that we're working on now that will set the stage for a Q1 2025 IPO uh, based on the pro forma statements that we'll be able to build from uh, these big contracts that are in the works right now some very large co-packing uh, manufacturers and distributors at the table. Exciting story. We look forward to more clips with Ivan Esk. We're taking part in this current seeding round. Brad, for retail investors to get in touch, how can they take part in the current placement? The placement is open uh, from a global perspective. Uh, just reach out to me at the email provided below and I'll be happy to provide uh, all of the base information uh, that you'll need for some diligence as well as your uh, subscription documents if there's interest. Brad, great talking to you in Zurich. Thank you for your invitation, Arne. It's a beautiful city and a beautiful day.